Oh, hello, everyone. Today, we have a student from UC Santa Barbara. Her name is Zoe. And Zoe, can you actually go ahead and please introduce yourself? Yeah, cool. Hi, my name is Zoe. I'm currently a second year chemical engineering student at UCSB. Um, I'm from Southern California, went to a really competitive high school, probably like many of you guys. Um, so yeah, thanks, Christian, for having me. Yeah, no, definitely. It's an honor to have you uh, speaking with us and obviously giving your own insight on you know, college in general. So I guess, obviously, um, first and foremost, uh, let's talk about chemical engineering. Um, obviously, that's your major currently at UCSB. So mm -hmm. I guess, why chemical engineering? Why did you decide to go into that field? So let me give this to you guys straight. I had no idea what chemical engineering was when I signed up to be this major. <laughs> I actually got into UC Santa Barbara as a biology major. But with the UC deadline being around November 30th, um, I, I had known I wanted to go into the sciences for a long time and something in, you know, biology related. But then as the college application process went on and I like started looking into other majors, I was like, maybe I should take the chance into some engineering. So then I started applying to a lot of other colleges for bioengineering. Um, unfortunately, when it came time to pick a college and I was like, okay, we're going with UCSB. They didn't have a bioengineering program for undergrads. Oh. Oh, so okay. I was like, you know what, the next closest thing is chemical engineering. So I'm going to try my hand at that. I actually got invited to a, um, an advanced welcome chancellor's reception, I believe, yeah. here at UCSB. Mm -hmm. And there I started talking to the dean of, of the undergraduate dean for engineering. Oh, wow. And then I checked my portal and then I was like, I'm not in the engineering college. <laughs> So he told me that if I was interested, I should um, apply to change my major, and I sent in an application. I was like, I'm very, I wrote a statement, and I was like, I'm super interested in your chemical engineering program, just because um, natural inquisition, and I'm the type of person that wants to, you know, build something. I love the applied sciences. I don't think I personally could do theoretical sciences. It would just yeah. drive me mad. Uh -huh. So I wrote that and I gave like an update on what I've been doing since I had submitted my application because, you know, you from November 30th in whatever year that you're applying to June of the next year, a lot can happen and a lot can change. So exactly. it definitely helps the admissions process to see like, you know, is a student still like giving their all? Are they, are they you know, engaging in things that they're still doing something at the end of this yeah. year? So yeah. I sent in a few logistics. I sent in uh, a statement of my interest. And I believe, I think it was a, a month or so. I don't quite remember. They were like, oh, cool. We're, we're going to admit you. So I was oh, wow. pretty happy about that. Uh, yeah. No, I think it's awesome. And actually, I just want to just, I guess, like a quick follow-up question. Um, obviously, you mentioned, mentioned that you were first initially uh, interested in like biology or like bioengineering because of, you know, the peak of like going through the process and thinking like, oh, maybe let me try engineering. But I guess, you know, throughout high school, um, and, you know, just like in your perspective, did you have an interest in engineering throughout high school or was it something that you started to develop during the college application process? Yeah, I actually, um, that's a pretty good thing to point out. So I actually didn't really have experience to anything engineering in high school. I took, mm -hmm. you know, the basic AP classes that were just, there were a lot of good background classes, mm -hmm. but I think the class that taught me more of like what it means to have an applied science was calculus. Uh -huh. Because from there, I was able to like visualize a lot of stuff. And I was like, wait, I can actually apply this to real life. And I was so excited about that. Um, the class, the classes I took actually didn't really do much to be like, wow, I want to build stuff with my hands. Because um, I don't think um, I took many of those hands-on classes. But it was actually a extracurricular that I did in high school that made me super interested in this. So I, I was a science Olympiad competitor throughout middle school and then I coached back in high school. Uh, from there I was like, wow, science is really cool. There was one event where we had to build a Rube Goldberg machine and that involved a lot of like physical calculations. I never competed in that, but I thought that was so interesting that you could apply science and you could yeah. use it to um, actually make something. But from Science Olympiad, I was actually recruited to uh, another extracurricular called Destination Imagination. Mm -hmm. And I think that was really where I was able to kind of understand the scope of engineering and what it means to be an applied science. Yeah. So I think a combination of those two extracurriculars really opened up like what you could really do with what you learn. 
Yeah, no, and I, you know, I think that's actually really interesting how you mentioned that because, you know, I think with Science Olympiad and like, for example, Destination Imagination, you know, DI for short, that a lot of kids don't actually see like engineering as, you know, being like the headline for that. Like Science Olympiad, they think of more like, like, yeah, like biology. Like chemistry, theoretical, but, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But general sciences and then Destination Imagination, more of like a kind of a creative outlet. So no one ever thinks of engineering. And I think, you know, especially if you don't have a school that's very STEM heavy and doesn't have like obviously any high school engineering courses or like high school engineering clubs or programs. Um, I, I really like how you kind of use your own creative intuition to kind of like find engineering in different perspectives from different programs that, like I mentioned, don't have the headline of being like, like engineering, you know? So yeah, like, yeah for sure. I think that's actually really cool about that. So obviously, yeah, thanks for so much for sharing that part. Um, I guess now let's move into talking about uh, UC Santa Barbara. So I guess, you know, first and foremost, uh, why did you choose um, UC Santa Barbara or what was your process leading up to deciding on that school? So my process was, I will admit I had an overinflated ego in uh, high school. I was like, you know what? I worked my butt off. My grades are, you know, up to the standard. Uh, my, extracurricul my, my extracurriculars are pretty diverse. Um, I was, you know, like your, your typical uh, college climber kid, if you would say, academic teams. I started clubs. I was on pep squad. I was like, you know, cheerleaders. I was in music. I was in this, that, whatever. Mm -hmm. I didn't start a business, so apparently I wasn't good enough <laughs> because, you know, again, a lot of imposter syndrome there, but more yeah. later. Um, with my college admissions process, I was, I overestimated what I could get into. So, you know, I applied for the IVs. To be fair, there was a lot of, um, there was like parental and societal and competition expectations from schools to do so. Mm -hmm. And there were, I didn't apply to all of them, but pretty much a few. And I was like, you know what? I want to kind of be away from uh, where I am right now. So I looked into a lot of like East Coast schools, a lot of schools that are like Northern California. I didn't really look international because I, just, I wanted to stay in the US. Mm -hmm. So location was kind of important, but I also was like, you know what? I have the chance to have reduced tuition if I do apply to the UC. So I applied to three UCs, mm -hmm. got rejected from two. Y'all can probably guess which ones. Um, so out of the UCs, I got into, I got into Santa Barbara, that was it. <laughs> and then I got into, I think two or three more private schools. One of them was a safety that I was like, cool, I got into UCs, so I'm not going to go there. But for me, it was between UCSB and NYU. Okay. Um, the two biggest things I have to say when it came to that was program availability and cost. So yeah. the tuition that UCSB was willing to give me was half, no, a, a third of what NYU would have cost me with the financial aid they gave me. It kind of sucked. Oh, okay, yeah. That's... So that was a big thing. Uh -huh. And then uh, program availability. I actually got into like a 3-2 program in NYU where you would spend like three-fifths of your time in STEM and two-fifths of your time in like the engineering side of things and okay. they were like two different schools I believe so I'd have yeah. to like keep changing locations and I was like I don't think I'm ready for that and I think that's way too much it's just inconvenient mm -hmm. so I was like well gotta go with Santa Barbara <laughs> yeah no and I, I definitely think that especially when deciding the factors you know obviously kids are like oh you know the name brand like like you mentioned there are pressures to for us uh, especially in Asian American communities it, it's not uncommon to hear that they pressure us into going to Ivy Leagues or you know, really top tier colleges um then again the name only says so much because like you mentioned there's also like the holistic aspects of it what are the programs that they offer tuition is a big one and i think oh, yeah. you know especially with the uc system it's because it because it is a public um, school system if you're within the state of california it's going to be a lot cheaper in terms of how much you're paying compared to a private school especially one that's you know located in new york and yeah. it's a private school like outside of california yeah it's going to cost so much and i think Tuition is a huge factor that a lot of people seem to neglect. They seem to overthink that, like, oh, you know, I got to, you know, just because I got into um, this school and it's cheaper doesn't mean I should go there because this school has a better name for it. And I, I don't yeah, think that's... Reputation's a big thing that I was like, is this really what I want to do? And mm. I mean, I could have easily just gone to NYU and sucked up the cost, but also be like, <laughs> like a, a huge amount of money in debt. Exactly. And I think, I think it just comes down to like, you know, it doesn't matter what, how good the school is. Like, let's say you went to an Ivy League school, but you didn't do anything, you know, with your life. You just focused on grades and you didn't really do much. Then what was the point of going? But if you went to a school that maybe, you know, wasn't considered as highly, you know, ranked than the Ivy League schools, 
and you did well, you like you got internships, you're like doing great there and, and doing amazing things. I would say that you probably got a better like life experience or just general um like I like benefit from just going to a school that you actually cared about. You know, it's like what you make of college, not the college that you actually attend to. So, yeah, I really agree. I mean, what you were saying about you know picking the school where you can really like contribute to the society and you can you know be focused on yourself and you know actually take advantage of the opportunities they give you instead of like focusing on just grades 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 like i'm not saying that that's the only thing that's going to happen in the yeah. ivy league but i guess what's more important is not just the statistics and the um reputation of the school but rather how you fit into that community and if it's a community of people um, and the culture culture is super important mm -hmm. of like where yeah. you're going so that's actually one thing that so santa barbara really surprised me of um mm -hmm. to be fair i'm going to be very honest and say i dreaded the prospect of going to santa barbara because i've had it told to me my parents uh actually one parent actually told my mom i'm so sorry your daughter is going to santa barbara isn't it just a party school oh my god no way this she did. She did. oh my um i had another another person say oh my god i'm so sorry uh did you know that santa barbara is just a school that's run over through like stds huh? first of all oh no matter god. where you go there will be parties there will be college parties yeah exactly i mean it's a bunch of 18 19 20 21 22 year olds on their own for the first time with like basically no parental supervision exactly like, there's, there's stuff things are gonna happen um, um about yeah. the std thing that was like a pretty old rumor from i think uh, whoever this person was went to school in maybe like the 70s 80s where i've never heard of it so I, don't, I, I, don't think it, yeah, I doubt it's relevant yeah. now because i've never heard of it until you just mentioned mm -hmm. it today yeah but a lot of but the santa barbara party school reputation is definitely there so that's why i was like man am i really gonna go to a school and just be labeled as a partier like i don't want to do that my friends know me as someone that works hard that they know their limits like do people really think i'm just gonna be an a crazy party girl from now on so that's that's one of the things that i was like really iffy about going to santa barbara but then over time and like going there and talking to someone from my high school that actually showed me around the most influential thing that he said was you know you don't have to party if you don't want to mm. and i think yeah. a lot of people like didn't get that i um but, but going back to reputation like don't, a reputation can be good and it bad because it can blind you from what, like, the entire kind of, everything else the school has to offer. Like, I didn't know going to Santa Barbara until I got into a, uh, a research program, even before my freshman year. I didn't know that they're so focused on undergraduate research, and I didn't realize how much I would value that versus, like, if I went to another school that is focused on graduate research. Mm -hmm. So like I'm the kind of person that wants to try my hand at everything to see if I like it or not earlier rather than later. Yeah. So maybe, like if it's not something I don't like, I don't want to waste my time on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and I think just coming on the reputation, like obviously we're not bashing on like Ivy League schools. Like there are kids that I know going to Ivy League schools that are just killing it out there. Like obviously, you know, some kids that like, make it there, they do well is that but I just don't want like kids who are thinking about applying there to have the perception that you know, just because you're going there, you're going to do great. Because keep in mind, the kids who do get there and the ones that I know, they, they work hard to get where they're at. And they're, they're doing amazing because they continue to work hard. So yeah. you just have to make sure that, you know, like you said, reputation is a whole thing, a uh, whole thing in that matter. I think it, it's common with, for me too, like, uh, especially I'm at USC. So that's like, you know, pretty party school in itself um, as well. And I haven't been to a single party in my entire freshman year. Obviously, it was partially cut short because of COVID. But um, for the most part, it wasn't like, it wasn't like on my bucket list. Like it wasn't like top of my list. Like, oh, I didn't go to a party. Um, but I mean, obviously, I'm not saying that don't go to parties. Like, if you want to go, obviously, go have fun. You know, be it's safe. what you make of it, really. Exactly, just be responsible. But if, you know, if I'm not really that kind of party person to go into like frat parties or whatnot, then I'm I'm mm -hmm. gonna spend that time doing something else, like maybe hanging out with friends. I think I'd enjoy getting boba with someone <laughs> than actually going to a party and, and drinking or whatnot. So yeah, like you mentioned, you know, there's a lot of reputations that things around it, but you're gonna do different things. You don't have to follow the the stereotypes or conventional norms that um, every college is kind of presenting yeah. to students. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, with the reputation thing, like, they're there for a reason, but take it with a grain of salt. Like, I won't deny there is a party culture at Santa Barbara. My Friday nights have always been very loud, and I can't study because of that sometimes. Uh -huh. 
but it's up to you as a student or as a person that is joining the community whether or not you choose to engage whether or not you want to um you know further okay i don't want to say further the stereotype it's just oh. it's up to you whether or not you want it's the college experience your college experience is for you and it's for what you make of it mm -hmm. so I think a lot of people feel like their life is dictated by what college they go to, and it really yeah. isn't. Yeah, it's definitely not, yeah. Because, I mean, mm -hmm. keep in mind, you know, and obviously, you know, there's exceptions to this as well, too, but there are people out there who, um, they graduate with a certain degree from college, and they don't end up using that specific degree for whatever job they're in. Like, I know, you know, being a biology major myself, I know a bunch of biology majors who graduated who didn't end up working in, like, a medical-related field of biology, science, related. like, some of them went into business. So... <laughs> It's just like saying that, you know, like I said, the calls that you go to and what you study or whatnot doesn't really, like, it does matter to some extent, but it's not everything. Like, there's so much more um, that you as a person can develop over time. I think college, in my experience, uh, in, at least in my opinion, isn't more of like, you know, the name or what, what you got out of it, like what's the degree afterwards at the end, but rather it's kind of like that transition and that stepping stone for you to actually grow and then eventually go out and do amazing things, whatever you choose to do. So, yeah. yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, that was a great way to kind of express, you know, UC Santa Barbara, and obviously, you know, I, I wouldn't say that, at least for those parents that are like, oh, I'm so sorry that you're going to Santa Barbara. I mean, clearly, I, I think, you know, you've been killing it. You've been obviously looking into your own things, doing research and you know, doing school. So I would say there's, there's so much that people don't realize about schools. Um, that's why, obviously, we do these videos to see kind of the opinions of everyone who's actually mm -hmm. attending those, so we get a different mindset on that. But yeah. Yeah. No, I was definitely, you know, blinded. I wouldn't necessarily blind it, but just, I just wasn't really familiar. I didn't really have a lot of opportunities to connect with people that went to certain schools in like, you know, maybe this is what the, this is definitely what the video format is helping to do. Yeah. But just not having a student who's actually there, not having like their testimony and their experience, it, it would have helped a lot to debunk a lot of the common myths that are yeah. surrounded by a lot of um, sites that are that claim to be like college guides yeah and exactly like and like rankings mm -hmm. big those are big ones yeah yeah I, I, I think, like i definitely think those stereotypes and myths they're they, they can be true to some extent but i think mm -hmm. that's the, pretty much the same for almost any school like any school will have those general myths like like you mentioned santa barbara is perceived as a party school and in your opinion yeah there is a party culture but it's not like that should dictate your entire entire decision because there are other mm -hmm. great aspects that still um you know I would, they get overshadowed by a lot of these reputations. Exactly, and I think you yeah. should value the things that you think is most important. Like, is this school good in research? Okay, screw the fact that it's, it's considered a party school. Look into the fact that it's a good research institution. Mm -hmm. so, and that, yeah. like the, the program that I'm in, like another thing that I really valued was how much like emphasis they put into my program. So I'm currently in the engineering school, and yeah. that is a pretty small school. I think my major initially admitted only 80 people-ish oh, wow. out of 4,000 in the graduate, in like the incoming freshman class. Mm -hmm. And that number is like slowly going down. So I really appreciated having like big school and small school feeling where I could be like, wow, this is a big university. But I also have like a smaller group of, like a smaller co community of mm -hmm. colleges or of colleagues in my school that I can kind of have that like small college experience as well. Yeah, no, I definitely think that was definitely a great option for you, at least, you know, at Santa Barbara. Yeah, so I think, you know, let's let's actually take a step back for a second. Let's go to, I think, roughly about two, two and a half years for you. Uh, back to when we wow. were seniors. Uh, back to wow. uh, when we, uh, <laughs> senior year of high school. So I guess if you wanted to, um, I guess, just, just cover your college application process. How did you how did you feel about it? The, I guess the entire system or how did you so, approach it? To be fair, this was a while ago. Um, mm. I was very bitter about it for the longest time. But, you know, I've, I've slowly learned to let it go because mm -hmm. it happened. Um, there's not much I can do but move forward at this point. But if we're going back to senior year, um, let's just say it doesn't quite start at senior year. For me, going to like a really competitive high school, people started taking their SATs like sophomore, from junior year. And then yeah. they would like take it multiple times. You'd have your practice test. You'd start planning all your APs. It was to the point where you felt pressure that if you didn't do it, you'd be out of the running to even feel like you're qualified enough to get into, like, a UC. That's, yeah, I agree with you on that one. So um, a lot of this actually, I would say even started earlier back in middle school. I definitely knew kids 
and like me definitely a box of self that were like I'm going to start joining all the extracurriculars I can so I can get a feel for how to balance my extracurriculars and my studies and I can be a well-rounded person yeah. yeah that kind of that kind of mentality I took with me to high school um so I I was always one that really liked to get involved uh Christian you probably know me as yeah, super sure. super involved <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, but on top of that, you had to balance all your academics, and you had to also be in a ton of extracurriculars, and you had to balance everything while, exactly. like, still taking your test scores and uh, prep school. So and when I say, like, the, pro the, the college application process wasn't really just a senior year thing. That was kind of, like, the finish line. That was, like, what all your hard work accumulated to. Interesting, Pretty yeah. much a lot of this stuff started basically the, the moment you step foot into many, for for me it was like beginning of eighth grade mm, okay and then it just freshman year and just keep going it's like yeah. you have to start thinking long-term investment ever since you're a kid and that like kind of takes the fun out of being a kid yeah i think i think it's definitely true i, I would say um obviously we can't speak on for on behalf of like every high school out there because every high school is different i think you know in the on yeah. our education system that we were a part of um it was definitely to a point where college was just something that was kind of almost engraved into our head like you mentioned eighth grade i would say yeah roughly that time or like just entering into high school but the moment we get into high school that like when we're just planning freshman year courses we're like oh i gotta do honors or i gotta do i gotta do this or, i gotta, I gotta do, do this to get to honors to get to ap exactly. and so like i'm gonna skip this and back and forth and then everyone takes exactly. this class then exactly <sighs> and that's where i think is a good point and i actually you gave probably um, out of all the videos i've done so far a really unique um, approach to it, where you mentioned that senior year that application season is the finish line. And I think that's, you know, it's a, such a true statement that I actually agree with you that I never thought about because realistically, I, I guess, you know, just like we mentioned, school, family pressures, societal pressures in general um, are just playing in a role every single time. You're always told, oh, you have to get good grades because you have to get into college or, oh, you have to do these extracurriculars and you got to make sure you're like a president or like at least an officer. You have to have some leadership position. You should start exactly. something. You should found something. You should volunteer on the side of extracurriculars and clubs exactly. and you need to start this and you need to play an instrument and you need to like. Yeah, exactly. And you know, <laughs> everything. I think, they expect I think, everything out of you. Exactly. I think it's just because, you know, at least from where we came from, um, I think it's because of the fact that we had a very rigorous academic system. It was very strong, but it was also, it was very rigorous and challenging. And on top of that, because we had so many options presented to us, it was almost like if we didn't take advantage of those opportunities that we were- We're short selling out. yourself. Exactly. Because, you know, there are school districts out there that, you know, maybe weren't as fortunate as us to have all these resources and whatnot. And they, you know, students there, they still take advantage of, you know, whatever they can, whatever resource they have, they're at least resourceful for what they have. But for us, being resourceful is pretty hard because we have so many of those yeah. resources. When you're mm -hmm. pressured into going to like, you know, really- um, challenging and tough competitive school meaning that you gotta do like you mentioned everything it's almost like you have to balance getting all straight A's getting like having like a bunch of extracurriculars having a bunch of sports instruments being able to still ma maintain your social life with friends being able to still have a family life like it is crazy and I you know, don't know how I did it exactly so <laughs> I think the purpose of that is um clearly it was it was kind of to a point where but yeah, I, I agree with you. Like, it's a finish line process. There's no way we could have. Um, yeah, that's just, it's just a really interesting phrasing that you put for that. Uh, just mm -hmm. kind of like the finish line mentality. But I actually really like that. It's really something for me to think about now. Okay, well, there you go. Um, yeah. Again, I want to say that the high school that I went to was, ex it was very competitive. I think my graduating class, out of a thousand kids with a hundred percent graduation rate, mm -hmm. um, we had 95 salutatorians. Yeah, that... and most most colleges like when I, when I went to college and I started telling my friends like oh yeah I went to this high school and this is the if this was how competitive it was they're like are you kidding me we had like two salutatorians exactly yeah salutatorians, which I didn't realize that was normal just because of how competitive the high school that I that what that I went to was mm -hmm. and it's it's not just that but you have the sheer volume of people that you're that you feel like you're in a competition with though it doesn't have to, it doesn't always feel like you're like a backstabbing kind of competition exactly it's more of just like i want to cheer my friends on but i also want to do my best to like earn my rank yeah no i agree with you on that i mean you know i i'm glad that the high school that we were attended um didn't do a ranking system if it did oh it would have been horrible it, 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 it would have been, been over it was already bad enough without a ranking system if it was if there was a ranking system uh 
would have yeeted off a cliff or something like that at that point. But you said no, it, not me. But I echo the sentiments. Exactly. No, it's true. That would have like, been so much stress. Like it was it already been, enough it, pressure to like. Yeah, it was almost like we already had it. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. it's just because like you mentioned the salutatory things. Like, yeah, your graduating class had like ninety. I think my graduating class we had like not the same number. We but it was like seventy or eighty. It was like it's still a lot. It, and it, it, like we have to realize that's not normal. Exactly. Most schools. At least I don't have, think like, so. Yeah, I don't think so either because every school I talk to has like one and one or like one and two. At most, like I've heard, I've heard of five. I haven't heard anyone mention seventy to eighty to ninety mm-hmm. people. That's crazy. And in a sense, when I was like, when I was told school, uh, kids at my um, at USC that where I came from, they're like, "Oh my gosh, you came from there? How did you do it? Like, you're amazing." I'm like, "Really? Like, I, like the perception, like the fact that yeah. the high school you went to has a perception in a college. Uh, that's it was pretty crazy to me. And then also the fact that like." When you mentioned that you have so many like salutatorians, it's almost like if you didn't become the salutatorian, you weren't good enough. Like you weren't at the top of your class. Keep in mind, ninety students, roughly about a thousand. You're almost looking at nine to ten percent of your entire class. Like exactly. the top nine to ten percent has yeah. to be a salutatorian, and those salutatorian requirements are crazy. You have to have like a three point nine three unweighted GPA. You have to have like you know extra curriculars. You you basically have to be the model student, regardless of the difficulty of classes you were taking. Exactly. It, it, so. it didn't matter. I mean, even if you did all regular classes, it's still, you still have to do well. And I mean, keep in mind, some regular classes are still pretty difficult for some students. So mm-hmm. yeah, I definitely agree with you. It's just, you know, I mean, just, I mean, just in general, going back to what you were mentioning uh, a while back, like, yeah, senior year, it's just yeah. a, it's a good thing for me to reflect on too. It definitely was a finish line. It's not a, um, not a, not, I don't think it's like the start of your process. Yeah. And I guess, yeah. you know, I guess just to wrap up like kind of the, college application aspect of this you know if you could have changed anything um you know if you could have gone back obviously none of us want to go back but if you could have gone back in time redo the entire process um what would you have done differently or would you have done anything differently um a lot actually uh let me tell you high school seniors um if you if you don't watch if you don't take away anything from this conversation but this one advice section for your for your college admissions just like start thinking about it earlier, start brainstorming your essays. And I know everyone says that, but take it from me who wrote my UC essays in like three days. Don't yeah, do that. Louder. Preach it louder. That, Don't do that. All do. We all do. <laughs> because you're going to be so stressed just because not, you don't have just these essays. It's very rare for your high school teachers to make specific expressions, but bless the people that do. But it's yeah. very rare for high school students to be high school teachers to say like, oh, okay, you know what? I know college admissions are coming up soon. Take three days off of school. No, they're not going to do that. You still have your life that you have to keep managing on top of all this stuff. So if you pace yourself out to the point where it's like at least, um, I would say like a month. And mm-hmm. I know a lot of like people are like cutting it, but um, if you pace yourself out to that point, like you should probably be in a better spot than me doing my essays in three days. Yeah, I know. I mean, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, another piece of advice I would say is have a little more faith in yourself and try not to compare yourself a lot to your peers. Because I find that those of us who do compare ourselves don't tend to compare ourselves in the wide majority of everyone. Mm-hmm. You, you tend to compare up. And that leads to a lot of things like imposter syndrome. Like I, never, I definitely thought I wasn't good enough to get in anywhere. Mm-hmm. I, I'm going somewhere now, and it's a pretty darn good school. Yeah, for sure. But um, have a little more faith in yourself and recognize that colleges aren't looking for a machine. They're not looking for a number, mm-hmm. which is what all your test scores quantify. Like you, to, In that retrospect, you're just a number in your test scores. They don't want someone that can just take a test. They want someone to contribute to their community in an academic, in an intellectual, in a societal way. So your essays, I would say, hold more weight than you think. And they're the, ex- they're the perfect example for you to show your hardships and what you've learned from that. And it doesn't have to be like, oh, X, Y, Z, horrible thing happened, which I'm very sorry, and I hope you are, you know, a stronger person out of that. But everyone has their own unique experiences, whether big or small they may be, that you can use to highlight something of your character that you want your university to see and to show them that you can be a great contributor to their campus culture and would be someone that your university, wherever you end up going, can be proud to say, like, they are part of our alumni and they are a graduate of this school. 
exactly. No, I think that was really great advice. I think, you know, first off, going off the first point you mentioned with essays. Yeah, start that stuff early. Oh my gosh, like. Yeah, people, start it early. It's, it's and also happen. just get it over with. Exactly, like, like yeah, obviously we say get it over with, but you know, take your time and obviously do it well, but, but definitely get started early. Cause like, I, you know, they tell you like, oh, start in the summer. No one starts in the summer. Oh, start no one starts in the summer. Like, okay, yeah, there will be some students that start in summer. And, you know, kudos to them. They, they, they were the smart ones. They were the genius ones who started. If they started early. They were more probably, prepared. They were, they, like, I don't blame them. You know, I, I don't even play down. I respect them for starting early. That's the, I do thing. respect it. Some people, like, will just, like, even, like, a month before the deadline, they'll realize, oh, maybe I should start. Just not even the essay, just filling out the application itself. It's just like, oh, my gosh. Because um, especially, you know, like, if you cut it too close, watch the application is just going to crash on the day that you turned it in. It's just going to be like, oh, my God. Oh, yeah, yeah. For the UCs, I would definitely say don't ever, like, submit your application on the day it's due because that, that website will probably crash. Exactly. There's so many kids applying to it. And yeah. um, I think especially since they're making, like, you know, test scores optional it, for upcoming classes, I expect it to be a higher population pool applying. So, like, for me, I, I turned my UCs in, like, a week before the due because I knew it was going to crash. I was crash. also a week. Yeah. Exactly. And it, it, it went out perfect for me. And I was like stressed for you. Well, not really. I was like, I, it's done. I, I can't I, do it. It's out of my hands. Yeah. I mean, I have more privates, but yeah. But I mean, there's a lot of essays. You don't realize, like, even though they seem short, we're like, oh, 250 words, 350 words. They can, it stacks up. Like, you see, up. the UCs, you already have four out of eight personal insights. And then, you know, you have your common app personal statement. And every respective private school has their own um, supplements that they want. And mm -hmm. it varies in word count. You might be lucky, may only have to write 100 words. Some schools may, may ask you to write another 800 words. So, um, yeah, it's, that's, don't, yeah. That's also a, another big thing, Christian, that you said about um, even picking what schools to apply to. Be, be realistic with yourself and how many schools you can apply to. I played to 13 and I got into four. And I could have saved myself the heartache of so many of those rejection letters and just time that I, I could have been you know, doing to refine some of my other uh, applications if I just whittled it down to like a few that I really, really wanted to go to. Exactly. Now, like you hear those people applying to like 20, 25 schools, like, wow, that's a lot of work and kudos to you for trying to take that on. Mm -hmm. um, but like not everyone can do that. And a lot of people I find are definitely a lot happier and a lot more, they feel like they're, their college experience, their application experience is a lot more manageable. If they really start from the beginning and they whittle it down to like a good size number that they're realistic with themselves and they can say, I have enough time to prepare materials and to write my essays for this amount of schools. Yeah, no, so and it's I, definitely a logistic uh, thing. Yeah, I definitely know I agree with that too because uh, I applied like 14 schools. And realistically, out of the 14 schools, if when I look back, you know, I think for me, I was a little bit more fortunate in terms of where I got accepted to. But when I was thinking about it, I was like, I really only narrowed it down to maybe like maybe less than half the schools that actually was like, oh, yeah, I will definitely go here if I get accepted. Because all the other schools I got accepted to, whether they were safeties or like, you know, like reach schools, I didn't even consider going to them. I just got the acceptance letters. I was like, okay, but like, I, I, could, like save, okay. Yeah, yeah. I could save so much time and money. I, if honestly, if I could redo my entire process. I would apply only apply to one of my dream schools, USC and the UC system. I wouldn't have, I personally probably wouldn't have applied to anything else because I didn't, um, I like, you know, I applied a lot of out of state privates and other in state private schools, but realistically I knew that cost was another thing, like a lot of factors, but um, mm -hmm. in the end I was like, no, realistically, I'm not going to end up going to maybe, um, maybe like six of the schools I applied to. And I could have saved so much time and so much money off of those, especially since you're paying, a lot, that. you're paying a lot for applications, you're paying, you have to pay to send yeah. your test scores. Exactly. Um, like there's a lot of fees yeah. that you, a lot of people just don't know until they get there. Exactly. And for like, I was fortunate enough that I, I actually had a designated like fund for college. Like I had, a, I kept track of my expenses for college, yeah. but like, let's say people that maybe don't have the same resources I did. It's definitely a factor that they have to consider. Exactly. Like, no, I definitely agree with you too. You know what? I think the ironic part was like when I was submitting, I don't even remember what the document was, but I was submitting a financial aid document and they were charging me to submit a financial aid form. You're no way. I don't remember which form it was. It wasn't FAFSA. I know FAFSA was okay, but no, there was, another, there was another supplemental form that came after FAFSA. I don't remember what it was for me because to be honest, I was just like, yeah, I'm not, I'm, like I calculated like I wasn't going to qualify for it. So I was like, okay, screw that. But like they were charging me and it wasn't cheap. It, they were charging me a lot just to submit a financial aid form. Like just hear the irony in that. You're being charged to submit a financial aid application. That's like, wild. Like, yeah, yeah, let's be real. Um, college is, it's, it's a business. Um, that's just, yeah. it, it, is, it is reality of it. But you know, 
it's like it's an investment that you have to consider is it worth it for you and so when you're like i think another great follow-up advice is choose your colleges wisely um try not to blow so much money you have to you're, you're paying for like test scores you're paying for application you may end up having to pay for financial aid reports so i think it's stupid <laughs> yeah um, but then again those those are just a fraction of the cost for what's going to be in the future so a lot of it is thinking ahead and just being being realistic in your situation on like what can i afford and am i and if i maybe can afford it at this time are the returns that i'm getting out of having a degree and being at this college enough to make up for for it exactly yeah and you know there's a lot of factors playing into it um but i think just in general you know just it definitely start early um, research into yes. it. There's a lot of factors. You know, this video can't. We can't cover everything. And even though I do a, a lot of other videos too, there's only so much that each person can tell. But obviously, yeah, do the research for it. But I mean, just overall in general, um, we want to thank you so much, Zoe, for obviously coming out and talking with us. Uh, definitely enjoy having you here to kind of share your own experience and your perspective on everything. And obviously, we hope that everyone watching this um, gets a lot of information and value from what you mentioned. So, I mean, yeah, obviously, I guess thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me on. For sure.